Hey what's up, it's cute what if this side. Today we will be seeing, what if Deku becomes serial killer. Now before we move ahead with the fic, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For future what ifs like this. Quirks. Izuku Midoriya was happily walking around at night without a care in the world. Being an insomniac like him, he finds a different way to distract himself. He was walking through the alleyways, in his usual clothes. A dark green hoodie with the hood up casting a shadow over his face, bandages covering his arms, hands, and forehead that made it look like a headband. He wore black jeans with black and white shoes. This was his hero costume. While fiddling with his knife in his hoodie pocket when he saw two people step out in front of him. One had big blocky hands and the other had three-fingered claws instead of hands. Haha, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Izuku thought happily as he stopped in front of the two. Alright kid, hand me your money. We don't want to hurt you. The blocky hand one said raising his fists. Really Jin, with the hand puns. The one with claws said with deadpan look. Shut up, they're funny. The now named Jin yelled. Izuku chuckled before getting an E-man's face showing his giant smile before saying Uo, look at your hands, that's so cool is that your quirk. Jin looked confused before saying don't you understand, we're mugging you. Izuku leaned back, removing the shadow that covered most of his face, making his seemingly glowing green eyes with dark rings around it show from under his hood. The two men took a step back and the man with the claws shakily pointed at him saying Titith G Green R Ripper. Izuku's smile got bigger before he pulled his serrated knife out. Ding, ding, ding he punctuated every word with a step forward, before lunging towards them on the last ding. He slashed Jin's throat, causing him to fall down and hold it while gasping for breath before choking on his own. Perfect blocky, so much passion in that scene Izuku applauded before placing his hand under his chin. Hem, now where did little Kruger go? The clawed-handed man ran as fast as his legs could take him. He wasn't dying here, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't. He looked behind him to see no one chasing him, but he ran into a wall and fell down. He stood up and was about to run back to find another way out, but he saw the green ripper holding Jin's lifeless body up like a doll. Come on buddy, we need to get out of here. Izuku said, mocking Jin's voice, holding his jaw and moving it every time he spoke like a puppet. He laughed before tossing the body on the ground and walking towards the man who fell down and crawled backwards as Izuku kept walking forward, smile ever present. The clawed-handed man hit the end of the alleyway and started pleading with him. Pee please man, don't do this. Chu don't wanna die here the man sobbed as Izuku stopped in front of him. Izuku's smile widened before saying then where do you want to be murdered? The man's tears started to flow down his face, but Izuku leaned forward and looked the man in his eyes saying I know you're scared, but at least know it will be all be over before your tears go dry. The man's got up and tried to slash him out of desperation, but Izuku dodged and grabbed his wrist. Izuku pulled the man up to his face, looking him in the eye before as he twisted the man's wrist, breaking it. Awa that was your chance, now let's take a tour of your insides. He chuckled before using the man's own hand to stab himself through the stomach. The man's screams were cut short as Izuku stabbed the man in his head, killing him. Still holding the man's hand in his stomach, Izuku dragged the bladed fingers up to the man's, letting the man's inside out on the ground. Izuku grin widened before he heard police sirens. He grabbed the hand and cut it off with his knife before clenching it as it seemingly melted into his skin. His hand suddenly grew claws and the other hand became big and blocky before they retracted back in. Welp it was fun Kruger, but I gotta go he said as he jumped side to side on the walls of the alleyway and took off on the rooftops, just as the police arrived to see the horrible scene. One even threw up, which made Izuku's day. Ha 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 Izuku's laughed. This would definitely put him to sleep. Patrick are you angry too? A yellow sponge said to a starfish. Here comes my favorite part Izuku thought happily as he took a bit of his karma crackers, watching his TV. Yeah the pink starfish said, looking grumpy. What's the matter? I can't see my forehead. P-F-F-T-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A Izuku laughed hard, dropping his cereal and smacking his leg. Sunday cartoons were his third favorite thing to do in his spare time. This was his favorite kind off show too. After about five minutes of laughing, he calmed down and looked at the spilled cereal and shrugged his shoulders. Tsk tsk, come here. Toki. Izuku whistled as a large bird flew in the room as he pointed to the discarded cereal. Breakfast. His pet owl, Toki, was black with white lines going down from his eyes making him look like a crying mime. Toki was a great horned owl. Izuku found him when his wing was hurt and was going to let him die, but he thought the bird looked cool so he kept it. And it was a good thing he did because Toki was the coolest pet ever. Especially since he learned Toki had a quirk that let him become a giant fire-breathing owl. How lucky was he being able to find an animal with a quirk? That's more rare than a pro hero's nudes Izuku chuckled to himself at the joke he made as he turned back to watch his show. He noticed that his cartoons were replaced with the news with his alias in the head title, which made his grin grow into a full-on smile. Hem, well buddy, looks like they found my friends huh? He said. Who? The bird hood in response. Looks like I should be more careful. Our friend Eraserhead was close by too. We're not ready to meet him yet. Izuku said as he started petting Toki. Izuku stopped petting Toki and went to put on his casual clothes and makeup. 
He used the makeup to cover the rings around his eyes and his scars since most people would figure out who he is otherwise. He wore a white shirt under a black hoodie and pants. To finish it off he wore red shoes. This was his civil clothes. Come on Toki. Izuku called out as his owl landed on his shoulder. Time to get some resources. He and Toki left to go pickpocket some people. He sent Toki to scout out any heroes so he wouldn't get caught. Toki would who if he'd see them. He started by going into large crowds and finessing their wallets from them then counting his earnings. By the end of his pickpocketing spree he had about 37,748.24 yen. Izuku walked away from the crowd to another one. He realized another villain attack was happening. The heroes were taking their sweet time to beat the bad guy. He walked into a nearby alley and flew straight up to the roof to get a better view. Once he got a better look he recognized the heroes. He remembered that he took notes just in case he had to fight them in the future. Kamui Woods, Backdraft, Death Arms, the giant lady who just kicked the villain in the face wait what? After she kicked the villain in the face and shrunk down to normal size, he listening to her introduce herself. Apparently her name was Mount Lady. He could already see that she was only in this for fame and fortune. Appeal, that makes money. Not his problem though, that belonged to Steen. Ha ha Izuku laughed as Toki landed on his shoulder. He noticed the bird tilt his head in confusion before he explained himself to can see dolls of her now. Was all Izuku was able to get out before bursting out laughing. Izuku laughed so hard he started to cry, which made his makeup run down his face. Toki seemed to understand as he started to laugh along with his master. After they both calmed down, Izuku pulled up his hood, wiped the running makeup, and climbed down from the roof before anyone noticed him. It's very hard to not kill someone who acts like their life is worth so much more than others. At the end of the day, people only cared about themselves. Only some insane bastards, like him and All Might, could understand how much someone's life is truly worth. Funny they both took different ways to deal with it. As he was walking away he heard Toki who before flying off in the sky. Izuku looked over to see Death Arms looking at him. He just smiled and waved, making Death Arms eyes widen. Izuku turned and calmly walked into an alleyway before taking of a manhole cover and dashing into the sewers. He heard footsteps chase after him making him smile. This could cause some people to pay attention to him, knowing a crazed serial killer was out in broad daylight with three heroes nearby. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-
President Mike spoke up yeah, asking for a racerhead of all people makes me wonder. He's not that very well known. No offense. I know why. A racerhead said. I've been trailing him for a while, and even fought with him a few times, but I made a mistake. I ignored him for a while. So, he's jealous. Midnight asked, confused. Most likely. In my brief moments talking to him, he seems to have something akin to admiration for me. He likes fighting me. Eraserhead said before somehow looking more serious than before. And, as some of you may know, he has more than one quirk. His last statement caused many people in the room's eyes to widen or narrow. Elaborate. Nedzu spoke. Eraserhead took a deep breath before saying. Anytime I would deactivate one of his quirks he would use another. For example, he would create spikes on his body and try to stab me and I would deactivate it. Then he would have mouths on his hands spit out smoke deactivating my quirk because I couldn't see him. Or he would stop me from moving and walk behind me so I couldn't see him. He'd never put anyone in harm's way if he didn't have a motive or he would have killed them. I've gotten in multiple situations where he completely allowed me to get a civilian away from our fight. Eraserhead paused to let his words sink in. All Might looked especially worried. Thirteen decided to speak up. How do you think he can hold so many quirks? No clue, but he has never kidnapped anyone before. Eraserhead muttered while rubbing his forehead. And if what Eraserhead said is true then he may be upset at being ignored. Nezu spoke up. An upset ripper doesn't sound like something we should take lightly. So what do we do? The ripper could set a trap for. Midnight started before Eraserhead interrupted. He wouldn't, but he will know if I come with others. There's no other option, I'm going to have to fight him alone. Are you serious? You've never been this foolish Aizawa president Mike yelled. No, I'm being realistic. Eraserhead said bluntly, ignoring the use of his name. All Might may be able to get there and take out Ripper quicker than me, but as soon as Ripper sees I'm not there, someone in that family is going to die. He finished before standing up. I'm gonna get ready for my battle, prepare the paramedics in case things go sour. He said before leaving. But, Mike started before Nedu raised his paw. Let it go President Mike, this may be the only way to end the Ripper's spree without any casualties. Nedu said before ending the meeting. Mama's little baby, made a mistake. Mama's little baby, was a huge fake. Mama's little baby, sealed his fate. Mama's little baby, got his due date. Izuku sang as he skipped happily back and forth. Hanging from a hook, that was hooked on a chain that was wrapped around the little family. A man with brown hair, a woman with red hair, and a little girl with dark red hair. M.M. Mama, P. Papa, I'm scared. The girl quivered. SHH, it's okay Kara, it's okay. The women said to, the now named, Kara. What are you gonna do with us? The man asked Izuku. Izuku stopped singing his morbid song and stalked towards the family, smiling. Nothing if Eraserhead shows up, but if he doesn't. Izuku let out a cruel laugh, scaring the family. Izuku's laughing stops before he looked back at the family I'll set you free. What? The father asked. Huh. The mother gasped. Ah really? Kara hopefully asked. Her adorable expression made Izuku nearly yell kawaii. Of course, but I had to make it look like I was gonna kill you all. Izuku said now if you'll excuse me, I'm going back to my song. The family was silent hearing that. Not fully trusting him, but had no choice to listen as Izuku went back to singing his song. Bang. Bang. The banging on the large doors made Izuku's smile grow as he said. He's here before yelling come in. The two doors were pushed open as Eraserhead walked in. Hey buddy French and pal home slice bird slice. Izuku said as he walked in front of the family. Hello Ripper. Eraserhead interrupted, walking towards him. You didn't have to kidnap someone to get my attention. Oh, but I had to. You see there's this problem that I need you heroes to help me with. Izuku said as he pulled a spike out of his hand. Eraserhead noticed this and put up his guard. Either this was another sick game or... What? Eraserhead said. This needs to be between us so. Izuku quickly turned and flung he the black spike at the family, causing them to scream. No Eraserhead shouted as he began to run, but stopped he saw the spike hit the chain, releasing the family. Confusing him and the family. W what? Kara asked before she saw Izuku standing above her. Both parents quickly grabbed her as the huddled together. They stopped when Izuku held out a stuffed bunny towards Kara. Here, you dropped this. Now all of you, get out. Izuku demanded. The family wasted no time as Kara grabbed her bunny, and they ran past Eraserhead and out of the warehouse. It caused Eraserhead to get even more confused. I told you I wasn't going to harm them. I kept my promise, can you at least listen to me? Izuku said as he sat down and crossed his legs. Eraserhead stood there before crossing his arms and saying you have five minutes. Izuku smiled and said then I should start now. I wanted to ask for all heroes help because I need a few of my targets to get taken down. Like heroes would help you, murderer. Eraserhead said as he glared at Izuku. Police, I'm a vigilante murderer. Izuku said, rolling his eyes. Ever wondered why my targets have a criminal record and if they don't it is later found out that they deserve one. Izuku held up his fingers as he started counting them off. Barukudo, a high-class businessman who was the ringleader of many kidnappings and murders. Rick Strap, an American who fled to Japan to escape the death sentence after many robberies and murders. Act, act. Eraserhead stood quietly as Izuku decided to continue. My targets are the eight precepts of death and the hero killer stain. How do I know that I can trust you? Eraserhead said. 
This is how, Izuku said as he stood up and pulled something out of his pocket and tossed it in front of Eraserhead. Some names and details of my soon-to-be target. You get to them first and arrest them, lives won't be lost. Eraserhead eyes widened before he grabbed the folder. Izuku turned around and said I'll be waiting for a response, Eraserhead. Then maybe we can learn more about each other. Before he seemingly disappeared in midair. Eraserhead sighed before walking out the warehouse. He pulled out his phone as said the family is safe, but we have another problem. He wasn't ready for this shit. <laughs> Izuku was sitting on a roof tossing his knife in the air before catching it and repeat. He was incredibly bored as he had nothing to do. The hero killer has been silent for a while so Izuku couldn't find him. The eight precepts of death are being quiet as well. It was boring sure he got some new quirks, but that was months ago. There was nothing to do, the heroes haven't got back to him on his agreement. And stalking the streets every night made everyone stay inside after a while. So right now, nobody seems to be any fun. His attention was soon brought to a warping sound behind him. He slowly stood up and turned around as he saw a young man with messy light blue hair, red eyes, and a hand covering his face as he walked out of a misty black portal. The portal the soon closed around to make a tall black misty figure with yellow eyes. Hirajiri, are you sure this is the Ripper? The blue hair guy asked. The now named Hirajiri said yes, Shigaraki, I am sure. Now go on, don't be shy, ask him. Shigaraki scoffed at that I'm not shy. I'm evil. Awa, you two are so cute. Izuku could. Shigaraki's eye twitched before he walked towards Izuku and said you're the green Ripper right? Yup, like you misty friend said. Izuku said and who are you? The handyman. My name is Tamura Shigaraki and that's Kirajiri. What I want is for you to join my league of villains. Shigaraki said, eye twitching at the jab at his appearance. Ooh, what do I get if I join? Izuku asked, grin ever present. A health plan. Dental plan. Oh both. To see all might get destroyed. The blue hair villain said. Izuku's eyes widened before his smile got bigger as he pointed to the two PFFT do you expect me to think you two can kill all might? Tamura smirked before he snapped his fingers as Kirajiri opened a portal, bringing out a hulking black creature. Its body was very muscular and had many scars on it. Its brain was exposed at the top of its head with lifeless eyes and a bird beak with sharp teeth. This this is how we bet all might. Tamura said with glee. Ripper, this is a Namu. Kirajiri said once he noticed Izuku's questioning stare. It has immense strength and speed without need of a quirk. Its actual quirks are shock absorption and super regeneration. In other words, All Might's downfall Shigaraki shouted happily. Then why do you need me? Izuku said with a questioning look on his face. Kirajiri took over again and said having you in this raid on UA would be a good backup to take care of the other heroes that will be there. Izuku chuckled and chuckled before busting out laughing. I'm not dumb enough to try to take down All Might. You're underestimating him, thinking that brain-dead monster could beat him. Tamira frowned, he wasn't expecting this. What do you mean? Kirajiri asked. Izuku's smiling face widened. He'll always find a way to win. He'll have help too, since you said there would be more heroes there. You'll fail. Hard. And I'll laugh right in your face when you do. Tamira growled, but Kirajiri stopped him from doing anything as he created his portal. You'll regret this. Tamira growled. No, I don't think I will. Izuku said cheerfully. The three villains left in a black mist before Izuku was alone on the roof again. Izuku's body started shaking before his head threw back with laughter. Perfect. Perfect perfect Izuku laughed hard. This will get the heroes to help him. But, he needs to talk to one of them. And he can't kidnap anyone so. Ha <laughs> Izuku chuckled as he leapt from the building and landed on another before running back to his home to get Toki. Time for another publicity stunt. Collateral will be kept to a minimum. To show how friendly I am. <laughs> All Might had just finished another meeting involving a certain green killer. Many heroes didn't want anything involving the teenage serial killer, but even with all the evidence pointing to HM being semi thorite, some still didn't want to work with him. It was understandable considering the boy's body count, but All Might had questions that needed to be answered. Is he somehow related to that man? If so then. All Might thought before he got a phone call. Hello. All Might asked. All Might the rippers at downtown square a male voice shouted over the phone. He's riding at Ing monster he's calling for you. Yes All Might yelled as he buffed up. I'm on my way before he sped off. <laughs> Izuku was flying on Toki laughing his ass off. Toki was in his chimera form and everyone was freaking the out they didn't even do anything besides fly around and breath fire into the air. Meh, guess his reputation is too great for even for him to understand. Detroit smash a masculine voice shouted as a shockwave of air sped toward him and Toki. Oh, T-O-K I revert Izuku shouted before Toki turned back into a regular owl. As Izuku grabbed and threw Toki away just as the smash slammed into his stomach, sending him into a building. All Might stood on a nearby roof, his fist held out, showing he threw the punch. Izuku regained his bearings as people around him cheered for All Might to beat him. Izuku chuckled as he rubbed his stomach. Toki, fly home. Now, he's grown attached to that bird so he wanted him to be safe. Toki was a fighter, but this is Ing All Might we're talking about. 
Hello All Might Izuku shouted with a smile and waved his hand frantically, sounding like a complete fanboy, which he was. Enough if enough Ripper. All Might stated. Oh come on Izuku whined I didn't kill anyone in over a year. And no one else will lose their life because of you All Might yelled as he charged forward and swung at Izuku. Izuku smiled as he ducked under the fist and slammed his fist into All Might's stomach. He knew it wouldn't really doing anything to damage All Might. He only did it so he could put up a show. Strange. Why did his stomach feel so weird? Feels like a wound or something. Izuku's thoughts were interrupted as his arm was grabbed and he was thrown high in the air. We Izuku shouted as he was airborne. Speaking of airborne Izuku activated the quirk and flew as fast as he could away from the city towards the outskirts. All Might was leaping right behind him and Izuku wanted to talk with him in private. Hopefully he could keep all his teeth in the process. Both Izuku and All Might landed in the outskirt of the city, Izuku's disturbing and horrifying smile against All Might's bright and reassuring smile. They stood off, staring at each other before All Might broke the silence. Are you related to a man called All for One? All Might suddenly asked. Izuku's smile turned into confusion, huh? All for One. All Might repeated. I have no clue who that guy is. Izuku said. Game sounds dumb though. All Might went silent before he asked how do you have so many quirks. Izuku smiled as he stood up straight. Simple. My quirk name is Absorption. Any DNA I absorb from someone else lets me replicate their quirk. Why do you need the hero's helps then? All Might asked. With an ability like that, you should be fine. Because, being a hero is my dream Izuku yells happily before slouching down but, being diagnosed with insanity, schizophrenia, and homicidal tendencies doesn't help you become a hero. Nobody would let me be a hero. Or believed in me at all. Most would rather lock me in an asylum than help me. If I can take down a big name Yakuza and a hero killer, I'd be happy going to jail. All Might stood silent before he asked you poor child, what happened to make you like this? Izuku's smile widened as his hand reached up to his hood before he pulled it off, getting rid of the shadow covering his face, revealing his scars. A cut going down his left eye and three slash marks on his right cheek. His right eye was black with the pupil being green. Once upon a time, a boy was caught in crossfire between two heroes and one villain. A stain covered their heart and tore them apart, an innocent child with a thorn in their heart. Izuku said as he raised his head don't you remember me All Might? It's me, Izuku Midoriya. All Might's eyes widened. He remember his and Endeavor's battle against Toxic Chainsaw all too well. Too many people got caught in the crossfire, but they all were saved, granted with injuries. Except one boy's mother who took a stab in her to save her son. Don't worry, I don't blame you or Endeavor. Just the villain who caused all this. Izuku said with a smile. But enough of me, I have something that regards to your job as a teacher. All Might's eyes narrowed what? Make sure you show up every day or someday, something may happen. Izuku cryptically said. What do you? All Might started, but stopped when he saw Izuku fly into the air. Sorry, no spoilers Izuku said before he turned and sped of into the air leaving All Might standing there. All Might stood there before he turned and leapt back to the city to make sure everyone was okay. This was disturbing. But on this was clear in All Might's mind. That boy needs help soon. All Might thought sadly or he'll lose whatever humanity that's left inside of him. 130. I need to get back to Toki. Or he's gonna start looking for food. Izuku said as he landed on his house's roof. Izuku slid down to his window and opened it as he ran towards his kitchen. He grabbed a steak out the freezer and pack of his. He put the steak in the microwave to unfreeze it. Once it was hot enough he took it out and put it into Toki's food bowl before pouring the on it. Toki Izuku called dinner. Rapid flapping and excited who's came from the living room as Toki flew into the kitchen and lunged at the Y steak. Hehe. <laughs> Izuku chuckled as he rubbed Toki's head you're too cute. Toki didn't respond as he kept chomping on his food. Izuku smiled before he walked to his room. Today was a good day. Let's see what All Might and the other hero do. In the meantime, he had to find some new quirks. He needed more defense anyway. One hit from an actually strong hero would take Izuku out. <clears throat> Izuku was walking forwards, dragging an unconscious man by the scruff of his shirt behind him. The man's name was Goro Tenkai, most notable for his stone skin quirk that allowed him to turn his skin a dark gray and made him harder than iron. Izuku has that now too. He had black hair in the style of a ponytail with black eyes. It took Izuku three hours to take him down. This bastard cost him two days to find, but it was mostly a long chase, it was easy to take him down. The guy was a glass cannon under that stone skin. He hey. Izuku chuckled, holding the unconscious Goro up to his face don't always rely on your quirk, because when your quirk fails, what more do you have? Insane as he was, Izuku was smart. Most pros knew this very well. Even the fakes, as Stain called them, or people that were in it for money knew it. That one asshole who could control his hair didn't and now he was in the hospital with one less arm. Izuku grabbed a chain from his hoodie pocket and tied Goro to a light post before taking out his knife. Izuku smiled as he carved a message and a smiley face into the man's. It read, I caught a bad guy for you. Love, Ripper. Izuku pocketed the knife and walked away with a grin that showed out from his hood. This will surprise everyone, have fun media Izuku yelled, laughing hard as he bursted off running to find his next target. 
An energy cannon from his mouth sounds interesting. This was the worst day ever. Eraserhead was slowly getting overwhelmed, 13 was slowly losing against Kirajiri, and the other students had been spread around the whole USJ by Kirajiri. Achako was beginning to wonder if anyone was going to survive this. Her, Momo, and Kayoka were together fighting off their horde. She knew Asui, Maita, and Kaminari were together as that's the last thing she saw before she was sucked into the portal. But she had no idea where Ida wa. Crash. Screech. A loud crash was heard along with a loud screeching. Everyone turned their heads and saw a giant black and white owl with long neck. On top of its head was the ripper with his trademark grin. Hello Izuku shouted. I'm here to help. As Izuku finished his sentence Toki, S reached and charged forward knocking away any villain close to him. Izuku leaped off and grabbed Eraserhead before Toki crushed him, bringing him to the top of a nearby tree. Hi hi. Izuku happily said as Eraserhead quickly stood up. How do you know they were attacking? Eraserhead asked, still on guard. Oh, they asked me a while back to join, I said no, act, act, Izuku said as he listed them off on his fingers, and because I wanna, Sai eraser head side fine, keep these guys busy while I help 13, Izuku pointed over to his owl, slamming away every villain near him Toki's got that handled, I'll go help the students, ugh, fine, just don't kill anyone, eraser head muttered as he rushed up to 13, he he, I'll be good for now, Izuku smiled as he looked over to see a group of villains surrounding a couple students. And I'll start now. <laughs> Achako, Momo, and Kayoka were slowly getting overwhelmed and tired. Achako felt like puking and there was no way she and Kayoka could buy Momo enough time to create a weapon powerful enough to take out the rest of. Momo, look out Achako yelled as a villain came out from behind Momo and was about to punch her into the ground. S-C-H-I-L-C-K. The villain fell down as Izuku stabbed his claws into the man's back and slammed him into the ground. Momo jumped back to her friends as Izuku ripped his claws out and stood up straight. Hello ladies. Izuku said cheerfully I am here to help. You're the. Kayoka stuttered before another villain finished for her. Th the green R ripper. A villain with four legs shuddered. Izuku smiled before lunging into another crowd of villains with the animalistic roar. The girls quickly ran to hide as Izuku stabbed and slashed at the villains, but not hard enough to kill them Momo noted. Why is he helping us? Achako asked. I don't know and I don't want to. Kayoka said, terrified of the ripper. HHE is not trying to kill them. Momo said, causing the two other girls to look at her questionly before she explained he's purposely avoiding hitting any spots that would cause immortal injuries. After a while Izuku had grabbed the last standing villain by the scruff of his shirt and head butted him, knocking him out. Izuku turned his head to look over at the girls hidden behind a rock. He smirked and dropped the guy before walking towards the rock, causing the girls to freak out. Oh come on, I said I'm here to help. Izuku said. Come on out, I know you're there. I promise I won't hurt you, Scout's honor. He said holding up two fingers to his head. Fine. Achako said as she stood up. What are you doing? Momo hissed. If he was going to hurt us he would have done it already. Achako said to her friend. She's right. Izuku said. I'm just trying to help. Kayoka and Momo reluctantly stood up as Izuku's smile got bigger as he said try to go and help your friends while I deal with the boss. Izuku turned around and was about to fly off before Achako spoke up. Why are you helping us? Achako said I mean, I'm not ungrateful. But why? Izuku gave her a gentle smile making her blush as he said because I want to be hero. Before flying off to go help his owl. Confused, but determined, the three girls went out to help their classmates. Better to get them now than later. <laughs> Everything was going in favor of the students. Eraserhead and 13 were able to get Tenya out of the building so he could get back up. The students were rescued and brought back together with the Ripper's help, and most of the villains were taken down. Unconscious at the request of Eraserhead. Hirajiri was surprised that Tamira was so calm as the two pro heroes, the Ripper, and his owl, back to his regular size, walked towards them, with the students watching from near the entrance. Hehe. <laughs> Shigaraki chuckled suddenly Namu, show them our might. Namu charged forward extremely fast and tried to slam its fist into 13's stomach, but Izuku's arm stretched out to pull him out the way before setting him down. Eraserhead tried to deactivate its quirk, but it still sped forward, and was about to crush him. Izuku quickly tackled him out of the way. Damn it Eraserhead cursed as he got up that things fast. This is gonna be fun. Izuku cheerfully said, gaining a deadpan stare from Aizawa. Namu roared and charged towards them before Toki flew forward and transformed, slamming Namu back from his master. No, Toki Izuku yelled, making the bird look at him confused go protect the students, we got this. Toki hooed and shrunk back down and flew to the students. The Namu rushed back and tried to punch it, but Izuku jumped in front of it and stabbed it with multiple spikes. The spikes were slowly pushed out as the wounds were healed. Izuku grinned as he turned one hand into a claw and the other blocky as Namu ran towards him. He punched Namu's face while the other had stabbed it in the stomach. Namu didn't react as it punched Izuku in his face, sending him skidding back. It stabbed wound healing and the on Izuku's claw was absorbed into his skin. Hehe. <laughs> Izuku chuckled before whispering. 
I'm gonna kill you. Namu ran forward and punched Izuku in his face, but this time Izuku didn't react. He just stood there with a big smile on his, now gray, face. Eraserhead's eyes widened. Guess the Ripper was telling the truth. Tamira's eyes widened before he yelled what? Izuku said as he lowered his head now I know for a fact. Know what? Kirajiri asked, ready to warp Tamira and him out of here. Izuku raised his head showing a sadistic and thirsty smile. Eyes glowing green. That you're all gonna die. Namu roared as both it and Izuku charged towards each other, exchanging blows to each other's body at rapid speeds. Neither being able to overpower each other. Izuku's shock absorption and stone skin versus Namu's shock absorption. Seeing that this was getting nowhere, Izuku dodged and jumped backwards, kneeling down and opened his mouth. His mouth glowed red as a beam shot out at Namu who had no time to dodge. After the smoke cleared it showed Namu with half of its body destroyed. The Namu screeched for a few seconds before it regained its lost half. Izuku stood up straight as he and Namu stared each other off. Soon after, a giant bang came from the entrance revealing a very pissed All Might. All Might appeared right next to Ripper as Eraserhead and Thirteen went over to the students seeing All Might arrive. Hey ha ha. Izuku laughed hard your head now. Tamira growled before yelling damn you. Poor poor Handeman. Izuku mocked. Namu kill them both Tamira raged. Namu screeched as he ran towards Izuku, but All Might intercepted with a Carolina smash. Izuku smiled before turning to All Might and said that thing has shock absorption and super regeneration, be careful. As he leaped back in front of the students. Why aren't you helping All Might? A kid with purple hair and rings around his eyes asked. You seem to be able to take on that monster pretty. Izuku chuckled them strong, but a clash between those two wouldn't end well for me. Namu was bigger in size so he could take more hits and had a quirk that negated damage. But Izuku's shock absorption wasn't as good as Namu's, mainly because he was smaller in size. All Might would defeat him easily and if Namu could take on those rapid hits from All Might, he'd lose. Besides, stone body combined with shock absorption would only just put him on Namu's durability level, but barley. All Might dodged a slash by Namu and grabbed its waist and tried to slam it into the ground. But Kirajiri created a portal where the Namu would have crashed, letting the Namu stab its claws into All Might's ribs. Izuku was about to get involved again, but half of the Namu was suddenly covered in ice, allowing All Might to break out. Just as Kirajiri was going to us his quirk, a red-eyed blonde tackled Kirajiri, threatening to blow him up as a spiky redhead tried to hit Shigaraki, with the blue-haired villain dodging. Izuku looked over to see Endeavor's son, Shoto Todoroki, was the one to freeze Namu as All Might jumped back, holding his bleeding side. Perfect, the heroes seemed to be triumphant. Until Kirajiri redirected Bakugo's explosion into destroying the ice on Namu, freeing the monster and letting Kirajiri get back to Shigaraki. Damn it Bakugo cursed as Todoroki narrowed his eyes. Namu regrew the limbs and stood back up as the entrance opened up again, revealing the rest of the UA. Staff along with Tenya. The Namu was about to charge forwards again, but it was sucked into a portal along with Shigaraki by Kirajiri. It was silent after that before Izuku said "Welp, my job's done here. Let us fly Toki. Toki, who was resting in Achako's arms, flew out towards Izuku. Izuku floated in the air towards the hole in the ceiling as Toki landed on his shoulder. Where the hell do you think you're going Bakugo yelled. Home. Izuku smirked before raising his head so Bakugo could see his face and whispered Kakan. And sped of into the air. Bakugo's eyes widened. The Izuku. Izuku still alive Bakugo stood there shocked even when the rest of the heroes came down to take away the villains and help the wounded All Might and Thirteen. He needed to tell mom. Phew. Izuku said as he was flying I thought they were going to try and capture me. Toki hooted in response. As the two were flying Izuku decided to lay low for a while. Pissing off an entire league wouldn't bode well for him. So, time to spend his days gorging on food while watching TV. Toki, just a heads up. Izuku said as Toki looked at him. Stay in your cage when we get home. It's gonna be some alone time for me. Toki hooted as the two flew home. <laughs> Damn it Kirajiri Tamira cursed, throwing throwing a chair across the room. How does that shit have Sensei's quirk? What do you mean, young Tamira? A voice said over a static fill TV. Shigaraki's eyes widened before he rushed over to the TV. Sensei it was the Ripper's fault that we failed we tried so hard, but. It is okay, young Tamira. We got you, Kirajiri, and the Namu back safely. That's what matters. All for one gently said. Now, what did you mean that he has the same quirk as me? The Ripper, he has so many quirks. Tamira explained. He was strong enough to hold off that Namu you sent us before All Might actually showed up. Does the Namu still have its quirks? All for one asked. Yes, Tamira answered. Then that's what matters. All for one said. If he gets in our way again, we'll deal with him. Now, rest up young Tamira. You did well today. Tamira bowed his head. Thank you sensei. The screen went silent as Tamira sat there in silence. Kirajiri spoke up goodnight Shigaraki. Before warping away, Tamira whispered to himself in rage I'll kill you, Ripper. Even if it's the last thing I do. A week later, at the cemetery. Bakugo has just walked in the cemetery, flowers in hand. He visited Auntie and Ko's grave every other week. It was a way for him to apologize for bullying Deku when they were kids. He wasn't too proud to admit that he was a dumb little brat then. If he hadn't. Bakugo stopped once he noticed someone in a hood sitting cross-legged in front of Inko's grave, 
and it didn't take a genius to figure out who it was. Bakugo stood there in silence before he finally spoke up Deku. Izuku slowly looked up, that smile still on his face. Kakin, what nice weather we are having. No it wasn't. It was dark and raining hard as hell. After a few minutes of silence, Bakugo asked. Why did you leave? Mom and dad would have taken you in. Why are you, like this? Instead of telling you. I'll show you. Izuku said with a smile as he stood up and placed a hand on Bakugo's forehead. Memory share. Bakugo saw. Everything from Izuku's perspective. Izuku accidentally drinking his mom's buying a cut on his mom's hand as a child. Activation his quirk and copying his mom's. The happy realization that Izuku got when he could copy his mom's power. The car drive to the hospital to get this new quirk checked out. And then nothing. The last thing he then saw was Izuku opening his eyes to see his mother hunched over him with running out of her mouth. Izuku started freaking out, but his mom just put a hand on his cheek and smiled saying it's okay before finally dying. Izuku just started to cry and yell before passing out. Izuku waked up to a hospital bed before panicking. He ran out of his bed to the bathroom and, for the first time, looked at his scared face and eye. He panicked even more as a buff man came in trying to calm him down. The man tired to hold Izuku down when he got louder, but he bit down on the man's arm, copying the man's strength quirk, before ripping out of the man's grip. Panicked and scared, Izuku broke out of the hold and snapped the man's neck trying trying to shove him away. This was the first time Izuku had killed. Horrified at what he did, Izuku tried to run out the room, but knockout gas filled the room. He was still confused, but quickly lost consciousness as multiple other doctors filled the room. All the memories disappeared in an instant as Bakugo regained his bearings. After Bakugo calmed down, Izuku started talking. So you see, coming to my childhood bully was on the last thing on my mind once I escaped that hospital. Izuku said. Deck Izuku. Bakugo said, surprising the green killer, as tears threatened to fall out but he forced them back. Tuam sorry. I was dumb and stupid and I thought I was the coolest little shit on the planet if I never. Bakugo was interrupted by a hug. I accept your apology, Kakin. The blonde didn't hug back, but didn't refuse the hug either. Izuku let go of his blonde friend and turned to walk away. Be a good hero, Kakin MC. Boom boom. Izuku joked as he walked away. Kakin gained a smirk. I don't need a shitty Deku to tell me what I already know. Causing Izuku to laugh hard before he disappeared in the rain. You'll be my first target that I go after when I become a hero. I'll be sure to save you from yourself, you got that Deku Bakugo shouted to the sky. <laughs> Izuku was sitting on top of a building, eating Paki, and watching the sports festival on his phone. This was awesome, those kids he saw back at the raid were really awesome. He probably didn't need to show up. Especially Kakin. In other news, the press still didn't know about him showing up to help. He wasn't mad, it made sense really. Because if everyone knew about a serial killer breaking into a school along with the League of Villains, that school would lose so many students, so very fast. His thoughts were soon stopped by a loud annoying noise. He looked down to see a hero wearing a suit of armor fighting against. Hero killer Izuku shouted as he dropped the pokey and his phone near mine. Izuku jumped up towards the two fighters. Time to take care of his target. <clears throat> Ingenium ducked under a slash from Stain and threw a punch while activated his elbow engines, making his punch slam hard into Stain's stomach, throwing him into a wall. Stain's head fell down as Ingenium, seeing an opening, flew towards Stain. When Ingenium neared, Stain's head shot back up and moved out the way causing Ingenium crash into the wall. Ingenium got out of the crater in the wall as Stain rushed forward and slashed at Ingenium. The hero dodged, but got a light cut on his shoulder, which was all Stain needed. Perk. Ingenium gasped, realizing he couldn't move and fell to the ground. W what? My quirk Stain said as he stalked forwards, raising a sword helps me end fakes like you. Ingenium closed his eyes as Stain swung the sword down at him. Suddenly he felt something grab him and pull him away. He opened his eyes and looked up to the last person he'd expect to save him. T the Ripper. Ingenium gasped. Can you move, Engine Man? Izuku said as he held Ingenium by the scruff of his hero outfit. No, his quirk did something to me, I can't moff. Ingenium started before Stain interrupted him. Why are you here and helping him, Ripper? Stain growled. He wasn't prepared for the Ripper today. That little Ur has been after him for so long. He couldn't stay in one place without the Ripper and his beast nearby. Because Izuku started as he raised his hand pointing the palm at Stain. His mouth hand opened up revealing a full set of teeth and a tongue that hung out. I'm here to help. A energy wave shot out of the hand mouth, hitting Stain head on. Blasting him through a wall into a nearby street. Izuku swung Ingenium over his shoulder and ran towards Stain with a giant grin on his face. <laughs> Stain landed on a car, causing a huge dent in it. He groaned and he pulled himself out of the dent as anyone who was in the area ran away. As soon as he got out of the destroyed car, multiple police cars pulled up as the policemen got out and pulled out their guns, aiming at him. The Ripper landed a couple of feet in front of him, making the policemen look horrified once they noticed Ingenium hanging on his shoulder. Izuku didn't acknowledge them as he tossed Ingenium to an officer on his right. He's paralyzed somehow. Izuku said leave, this guy's mine. The policemen grabbed the downed hero and drove away, deciding saving a hero is better than trying to catch two serial killers who severely outclass them. 
Tell me Ripper. Stain started why save that fake instead of taking me down when I wasn't looking. How is he a fake? Izuku asked he seems like a good hero. Remember how he risked his entire hero care to take down a serial killer? Huh. Stain mutter, confused. I mean sure. He failed and needed to have another killer save him, but whatever. Izuku shrugged. Stain realized what Izuku meant, but before he could say anything else Izuku lunged forward with his knife aimed at Stain's head. Stain dodged as he grabbed one of his swords and slashed at Izuku. Izuku's knife seemed to melt, turning into a shield, blocking the sword. Stain, shocked at the weapon change, couldn't dodge as the shield was rammed into him, knocking him away. What the stain said, rubbing his jaw. Izuku smiled as the shield turned back into a knife metal manipulation. Owned by Zef Judgy, a human trafficker, before I copied it then killed him. All I have to do is touch the metal then I can turn it into any weapon I want it. Stain narrowed his eyes before putting away his sword. Now not only does he have to worry about this kid taking his swords with his magnet hands, he also has to worry about his own weapons turning against him. Damn. Stain muttered before he grabbed something from his pocket I didn't want to use this. HM. Izuku hummed before gaining a sadistic smile, changing the knife into a whip don't worry cause you won't have to. The whip whipped around, destroying parts of the street and parts nearby cars. Stain tried to dodge, but came out with a lot of slashes and cuts. Hee hey. Izuku chuckled before swinging his whip again for another barrage. Don't worry, I won't kill you. Because that would take away all the fun. Stain tried to dodge, but was ended up being wrapped up in the whip. The whip tightened around him, causing him to choke and gasp for air. Hey 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 h a h a Izuku insane laughter echoed in the streets as he started to swing Stain around, slamming him into nearby walls before harshly pulling on the handle to bring Stain plummeting to the ground. Izuku didn't notice until the last second that a misty black portal opened up where Stain was heading until it was too late. Once Izuku noticed Stain falling into the portal, he tried to pull him back, but was too late. In a matter of seconds Stain, half of Izuku's knife, whip, and the hope of actually getting the hero's help was gone. F-U-C-M-M-M no no. Izuku mumbled to himself. No negativity, knowing goddamn bullshit. Izuku leapt off into the sky, creating a crater where he was. He did not want to take his tantrum out on the heroes that were undoubtedly going to arrive. Capturing two serial killers was something no one was going to pass up. Toki was given a very important task. So important that it rocked the world. Give Class UA a congratulations letter for their hard work at the festival. Very dangerous, but Toki was allowed to go Chimera if he had to. Just give the letter to the nice girl with the blush and piddle his way out of there. Toki flew around UA, looking for the girl, but was unsuccessful. It was only till later that Toki saw her and a tall kid as she was about to go in the high school. Toki had to act fast and dive-bombed from his perch towards the nice girl. So Ida, how's your brother? Achako asked. He's fine, thankfully. Just a few broken bones and cuts, but other than that fine. I know the Ripper's bad, but if he hadn't shown up to save my brother, Tensei said he could have been paralyzed from the waist down. Permanently, the blue hair boy said making Achako gasp. Wow, I guess Ripper's not all that bad. Achako said. Ida gained a deadpan look anyone named the Ripper didn't gain that title for being not all that bad Achako. Achako puffed out her checks well. Who? Both Achako and Ida jumped at the surprisingly loud who. The two turned their heads, Ida gaining a confused look and Achako recognized the owl. That that's the Ripper's owl. Achako whisper, but loud enough for Ida to hear. W what Dito's at W want. Ida stuttered, remembering what the beast did. I don't know. Achako said before the owl hoot again, so she held her arm out for him, which he landed on. What do you need little guy? The bird turned around, showing a letter strapped on his back. Achako unwrapped it off of Toki before he flew off. Achako got confused, as did Ada, before she unwrapped the letter. What she saw scared and confused her. The letter read. Hi class 1A. My name is the Ripper. As most of you know, I came to help you all back at the USJ incident. Sorry that I couldn't go to help the rest of you, but I needed to help Erazerhead Senpai. So, I saw you all at the sports festival. Great job especially you Kaken. Good job for winning Todoroki, you almost had it. But you have to go all out when fighting Kaken. To Achako, good strategy against Kaken, but you didn't think he wouldn't have a backup plan against you. To the rest of you you almost had it, but that just means you have to try harder. Plus ultra, right? Anyway, gotta go cause police are shooting at me by. The last few words were scribbled out very fast and a hole was at the bottom of the letter. Guess he was getting shot at by the police. Should we turn this into Aizawa sensei? Ida asked. Achako shook her head. After we show this to the rest of our class, it's only fair. Sigh, fine. Ada sighed. The two friends turned and walked into the school and to the class. As soon as Achako showed he note, everyone was shocked and some nervous. Why was the Ripper so interested in them? But, what confused everyone the most was, why did the Ripper call Bakugo, Kaken? Hey Bakubro Kirishima yelled as he walked over to his friend's desk. What? Bakugo asked bored. What's a Kaken? Kirishima asked causing Bakugo's eyes to widen. Ashido nodded yeah, and why does the Ripper call you that? Yeah, do you know each other? Siro asked. 
Back Hugo grabbed his bag and walked to the door. He's heard enough. Wait Kaminari yelled if you know something about the Ripper then you should tell the heroes. That insane basta. Kaminari couldn't finish as Bakugo turned and glared at him. Shut. The. Up. The class, besides Ida and Achako, were shocked. Why was he defending a serial killer? You know nothing about him, none of you Katsuki yelled. None of you know what he's been through nor why he's doing what he does so watch your ring mouth. Bakugo finished his rant before stomping out the room. Because of this, he didn't notice Aizawa watch him as he ran off. So you do know something. Katsuki Bakugo grumbled as he stomped towards the principal's office. Yesterday he yelled at all his classmates and apparently Aizawa wasn't too happy about that. So today he was told to head straight to the principal's office after homeroom. He hoped this would be over quickly. As he walked to the office he gave the door two loud knocks before waiting. After hearing the principal's voice say come in, he walked into the room. And he was completely surprised to what he saw. Every single pro hero that taught at UA. High school was in that room. Principal Nezu, All Might, Midnight, Cementos, Ectoplasm, President Mike, Power Loader, Vlad King, and Hound Dog. Before Bakugo could say a word, Eraserhead walked in the door from behind him and shut it before crossing his arms. Bakugo Katsuki. Nezu started. Please, take a seat. We have some questions to ask you. Bakugo sighed as he took a seat, knowing he didn't have a choice. We have reason to believe you have connections to the Green Ripper, young Bakugo. All Might started. Bakugo sat there silent, looking at his lap. Come on kid, this will make everything a lot more easier. Vlad King said. It's my fault Yano. Bakugo started. It's my fault that Izuku lost his mom and turned into what he is now. Bakugo, how could that be your fault? Eraserhead asked. You two were friends from what your parents told me. He hey. Bakugo chuckled humorlessly. I deserve to be called anything but his friend. After he didn't get his quirk when I got mine. I became the biggest asshole ever. I bullied him, called him names, and even beat him up. All because I was to Ing Shallow and thought people who were quirkless were worthless. So you bullied him into becoming insane? Power Loader asked. Bakugo shook his head. No, the entire time I had with him, Izuku never stopped wanting to be my friend. And he never did. So then what happened? Midnight questioned. Bakugo sighed. He got his quirk, but wasn't able to show me. After Toxic Chainsaw's attack, I didn't see him or his mom. All I knew was that his mom was dead so I assumed the worst. For years I felt guilty, thinking that they were moving away to stop the bullying that I caused. After the UA, attack and him helping, before he left I saw his face. I thought he wanted me dead and I was going to let him do it if I saw him again. That's not smart young listener. Mike lectured. He's more than capable to kill most of us here. Yeah, I know. Bakugo muttered. When I did meet him again, he was different, but still the same. Where did you meet him? Hound Dog growled. Bakugo growled back. I don't have his phone number, mutt. Bakugo. Hound Dog. Nezu sternly said. Calm down. This isn't an interrogation, we're trying to stop any more murders, Bakugo. Please, continue. Bakugo glared at Hound Dog before continuing. I go to Izuku's mom's grave every week or so. A week after the attack, I went to visit and he was sitting in front of the grave. And he showed me. Everything. What do you mean? Ectoplasm asked. It was a quirk, memory share or something. Bakugo grunted before he held his head in his hands. I saw everything. I felt everything. Take your time, young Bakugo. All might comfort it. Bakugo shakily breathed in and out before he talked again. He can copy quirks from others and keep them. Any quirk he sees, all he has to do is get your and he'll have full usage of your quirk. At least, that's what I saw him do. He seems to go at bad guys at random. No real target, just that they're bad guys. Thank you for your cooperation, Bakugo. You can head back to. He's not evil. Bakugo interrupted. He only wants to help. All he ever wanted was to help. Please don't. Bakugo stopped as he felt a hand on his shoulder. He turned and looked up to see All Might looking at him. It's okay, Bakugo. When we get him, we're going to get him the best help possible. I swear it. Bakugo took a deep breath before he got out the chair and walked to the door. You better. Before walking out the door, the teachers all looked at each other, not knowing what to do next. Bakugo didn't know anything extremely important about the Ripper that they didn't already know. Izuku's regular smile was strained as he read the news headline. UA student Bakugo Katsuki was kidnapped by the League of Villains during a field trip at the Cat's Private. Izuku tuned out the rest of the news reporter's words as he took in what happened. The League kidnapped Bakugo. They dared to kidnap Kaken. Toki Izuku strained out with a growl as the bird slowly walked towards him, scared of his master. We are heading out, now. Izuku busted a large hole in the wall and flew out, his owl flying right behind him. As Izuku was flying, his right eye kept twitching with silent rage. You don't with Izuku's friends. Because now, everybody in that ing league's going to get it Izuku screamed with a deadly smile as he shot off even faster into the air, Toki struggling to keep up. All Might, Endeavor, Best Genist, Edshot, and Neyamasa sat in a meeting room strategizing a way to save Katsuki. Momoye Irazu had made a tracker and, using Yosuo's quirk, fused it to Inamu, allowing them to know exactly where the League was. What do we know about the League's members? Neyamasa asked. We know their leader is Tamura Shigaraki. His quirk is decay which lets his disintegrate anything he touches. What else? Endeavor spoke up. 
The heavy hitter I beat was muscular at the cat's retreat. He could create muscles to enhance his strength and defense. Then there was that dabai kid who could create blue flames. But that's about all I know. Muscular took a lot out of me. It's a good thing you were there, Endeavor. Best genus said. I doubt Eraserhead and Vlad King could have beaten him while protecting the students. There was also a girl named Toga who attacked young Yuraka and young Tsuyu. All we know about her quirk is that she needs to use it. All Might said. Then there was Moonfish and Magni, both with criminal records. Also there was Mr. Compress and Spinner who were the ones who kidnapped young Bakugo, and attempted to take young Fumikage as well. Right. Edgeshot started. But what about the Namus? The one All Might fought nearly matched him in strength. If they've had more Namus like that, they would have sent more out during the Namu outbreak in Hasu. Niyamasa said. But that doesn't mean any of them are any less dangerous. Or if there are more being made. All Might nodded. Even if there are more Namus or not, we still need to save Bakugo. For once I agree with you. Endeavor grunted. I'll gather the police. Niyamasa added. The five collectively nodded in agreement. The raid was happening tonight. I'm still not sure about this. Ida said as the four walked, following the tracker. Kirishima huffed. Then why did you agree to come along? To make sure none of you got harmed. Ada replied. And to make sure you don't interfere with any hero or police business. We already said we are just heading over to help get Bakugo out of the way when the heroes come and save him. Shoto said. Guys shh Momo shushed panickedly. Someone might hear us. Yeah. A voice giggled from a nearby alley. Someone might. The four's heads all shot towards the alley and saw a familiar face, especially Momo. Th the Ripper. She whispered, terrified. Shoto took a step in front of his friends while Izuku grinned. Come on, we don't want to make a scene right. Izuku asked with a grin as he gestured around them. There's a lot of people here. Kirishima, still shaking, walked up beside Shoto. Why what do you want? Izuku's grin turned deadly. You said you know where Kakin is right. What about it? Shoto asked, keeping his cool and preparing to fight. I want to help. They were all shocked into silence, letting Izuku continue. They took my best friend and they will not get away with it. How do you know Bakugo? Kirishima interrogated. Izuku smiled as he walked backwards into the alley. Follow me, we don't want to make a scene. The four stood there before Kirishima finally started to follow the green-haired serial killer. What are you doing? Momo hissed. He and Bakugo know each other. Kirishima said. And remember when Bakugo defended him against the whole class, they clearly are friends. Or at least were. And if we can get his help then it's almost guaranteed we'll Bakubro back. Ha <laughs> ha Izuku laughed as they all looked at him. I, Bakubro. That's amazing. Yeah, well. Kirishima didn't know how to answer to that. Anyway, come on guys. After a while of silence, Ida stepped forward. He saved my brother for losing the use of his legs. I can overlook Ripper's previous crimes just this once to save my fellow classmate. Shoto and Momo both looked at each other before they collectively sighed and followed. As they followed the serial killer into the alley they noticed he wasn't as crazy as they first thought he was. He was still crazy, but he wasn't rambling about random things like they thought he would. So Izuku started as he leaned against a wall. How do you know where Kakin is? Momo stepped up. I was able to make a tracker to track on of the villains that attacked us at the training camp. I gave the original tracker to the heroes and I made a copy for us. Smart. Izuku grinned as he got up off the wall. Any of you have a plan when you get there. We originally planned to grab Bekugo while all the villains were distracted. I heard the teachers were going to bust the villain's hideout tonight. Ida spoke. But now I'm not sure what to do now that we have you with us. Hem, I have a few. Izuku rubbed his chin in thought. But we would need a chicken and a broom for a few of them. A toothbrush for some others. Shoto sighed and asked. What about the other ones that don't involve? Those. Well, we'll need some disguises first of all. Izuku said. Anybody have anything to change into? Momo hesitantly raised her hand. Two have an idea. The group walked out a nearby clothing store. Different outfits for each team, completely disguising them. Especially Izuku. He had a green, frog hoodie with googly eyes on the top hood. He had a white mask covering his nose and mouth, green pants and shoes. I thought the point was to not attract attention. Hiroshima said. True but. Izuku started before running a hand through his hair and made an Y face through the mask. I still want to be a cute little green boy. The group suite dropped. They sometimes forgot he was insane with how smart he sounded. Momo pulled out her tracker, walking to where it pointed to. Follow me, the trail leads this way. Momo said as the group followed after her. Izuku was in the middle as Kirishima and Shoto were beside him while Ida was behind him. Momo in front, leading them to Bekugo. He assumed that they wanted to at least try to stop him if he went on a rampage or something like that. You know, I always wondered. Izuku spoke, causing Kirishima to look at him. How is Bakugo lately? Blondie always went on and on and on about getting into UA when we were kids. Well, he's been doing good I guess. Kirishima spoke hesitantly. Took me a while to actually be friends with him. Kept yelling at me to die. Hey ha. Izuku giggled. Die was his favorite word. Way how we used to joke that it was his first word. Hey ha. Shoto stepped back, disturbed at the weird laughter coming from the green-haired boy. He he, ah, uh, I'm glad he could actually make friends though. Izuku said after calming down. Didn't think anyone could handle his intensity. Yeah. Kirishima said awkwardly. Silence filled the area as the followed Momo. 
with Izuku occasionally mumbling about something every once in a while. Chaos. Chaos was the best word to describe what was happening. Everything was so confusing after the heroes busted into the League of Villains headquarters. Beck Hugo and every villain in the room was transported away with some black goop. The group of UA students were hiding behind a destroyed wall as the true leader of the League of Villains. All for one, was close by and the cause behind this chaos. And All Might was standing above the entire catastrophe as multiple heroes searched through the wreckage to save as many civilians as possible. Izuku loved it all. He stood afar, holding unconscious Kirijiri under his arm. Soon enough, Izuku saw All Might land right in front of All for One. It was at that moment Izuku grinned and bit down hard on Kirijiri with his hand mouth, tasting the familiar penny taste. After that, Izuku's hair floated upwards like a continuing green flame as a green gaseous portal appeared underneath the two and consumed Izuku and the portal villain up, before the both disappeared from sight. All Might stood back as all for one floated in the air, blasting back Endeavor's flames with another quirk he was able to steal. The thought of someone even doing that filled All Might with a rage he hasn't felt in some time. But even then, All Might couldn't falter even a little. He still had Bekugo to protect along with the rest of the league. Just as all seemed bleak a giant, clothless, green-haired monster with no cheeks to show a permanent smile, and no genitalia stomped down right in front of the blonde hero. It was bigger than Mount Lady. With a roar it sent its giant fist at the villain and punched it to the ground. It kept roaring as it punched the villain deeper and deeper into the ground. Then, All Might students appeared, riding the Ripper's Chimera Owl flew from above. With Kirishima screaming out towards Bakugo. Come on the redhead yelled out desperately towards his volatile friend. Bakugo looked confused as he turned to stare at the giant attacking the villain. It paused as it kept its fist down on All for One, looked towards Bakugo and winked, holding up a giant thumbs up. Bakugo, needing no further que, roared out as he used his explosions to blast himself towards Kirishima. Tamira feebly tried to catch the blonde to no avail. All for One finally decided to fight back, and blasted Titian Ripper's arm off. Titian Ripper flinched, but gave no further indication he was in pain as he raised his other arm up to attack, but it too was blasted off with an air shockwave. Another shockwave sent the Titian's head right off. Titan Ripper stumbled back before he slammed down into the ground, laying still. All Might was scared that the teen was dead, but the Titians still began pulsing before the actual Ripper popped out, grin ever present. Yushigaraki hissed as he saw that annoying grin on an even more annoying body. Izuku turned his head to stare at him. Oh hi Handeman. I'll kill you Tamira was about to rush forward, but was stopped by all for one. Don't. Came the calm and collected voice of the leader. Go, take Kirijiri and your followers and go. Be but Master Tamira started, but was stopped by Izuku. How good luck doing that I hid the misguy somewhere you'll never find him. All for one said nothing as he stood there, silent, before the familiar black goop appeared in the air a few meters away. And it was Kirijiri who fell out. He found him. All for one ignored the teen as he placed a hand on top of Shigaraki's head. He patted the boy on his head before using his other arm to send out a black rope-like thing that attaches to Kirijiri, which somehow activated the man's quirk. He then pointed his hands at Magni and Toga, who was standing right by Kirijiri, who activated Magna's quirk on her, sending all the villains heading towards Kirijiri portal. W.A. Tamira shouted as he felt his body move against backwards, against his wishes. No please, master, don't leave me alone please don't. All for one looked at Tamira. You won't be alone, my student. You have your followers, you have your own strength along with my own to keep you going. Now go, become what you desire, fulfill your own dreams. Tamira Shigaraki, live and follow your own path become the greatest villain you can be. Tamira felt tears fall from his eyes as he was forcibly pulled into the portal, shouting out in protest. Soon, the portal was closed, leaving only All Might and Izuku with the masked villain. Izuku was the first to speak. Wow, that was dramatic. All for one stayed silent as he turned and stood off against Ripper and All Might. All Might walked to stand next to Ripper and looked at him. You got my students to help you rescue young Bakugo. All Might spoke. Izuku shrugged. They were already going to do it, I just jumped on the bandwagon. Besides, Izuku turned towards All for One and took off the white face mask. Nobody's gonna get away with hurting my friend and my favorite hero. All Might stood there silent before he nodded. Thank you for your help. Don't thank me yet. It's time for us to team up against this guy. Izuku said as he settled into a fighting stance. You can try to catch me later, but this time I'll follow your lead. All Might settled into a stance as well. I'll hold you to that. Come on now, I'm not getting any younger you two. All for one called out. Izuku grinned as All Might grimaced before they both shot forward towards the villain. Izuku moving more sporadically than All Might as he reached the evil master first. Izuku's fist turned dark gray before he threw a punch. All for one dodged to the left and held a hand up, letting out a shockwave into Izuku's face. The ripper was flung backwards as All Might reached his nemesis. Texas Smash All Might roared as he threw a punch, which the villain surprisingly caught, albeit he arms seemed to compress a little before he caught another punch by All Might. A green portal opened behind All for One with Izuku jumping out with both of his hand mouths glowing with red energy. Double Buster Izuku screamed with a smile as All for One was blasted from behind. 
This caused the villain's grip on All Might loosen, which the number one hero took advantage of. Quickly yanking his arm back, All Might uppercutted the villain into the sky. All for one quickly caught himself and stopped flying back, standing on air. Izuku wasted no time at keeping the pressure on the villain, used his portal to appear behind the villain and swing his no-clawed hand at All for one. The shadow leader dodged and grabbed Izuku by his throat. Our quirks are so similar yet so different. You got the Namu's quirk and yet it still has the quirks. He started as his grip tightened. I wonder though, what's your limit to shock absorption? Doesn't. Matter. Izuku choked out with a smile, spit coming out from the corners of his mouth. Izuku pointed behind the villain. Cause he won't let you reach it. A green portal opened behind All for One as All Might leapt out of it, fist dead back. As the hero's fist slammed into All for One, sending the villain back down to the ground. The two began to fall down, but Izuku opened a portal beneath them and they landed on the ground. All Might began panting, steam coming off him as Izuku gently rubbed his throat and stood up. Izuku turned towards him and raised a brow. What's wrong? I'm sorry to say. I'm reaching my limit. All Might grunted as he slowly began shrinking. Izuku's eyes widened, but still held a grin. What the hell? All Might was shorter now, but still held some bulk on his body. His face seemed skeletal and pathetic. I'm sorry you have to see me like this. All Might grunted. But there's no time, he's already recovering. You're not going to be able to bail me out again so I better up the anti. Izuku chuckled as he walked a few steps forward. I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'll take the lead for now. It doesn't seem like you'll be able to take any more hits. All Might sighed. Be careful, Midoriya. Izuku turned and offered the number one hero a smile as he clenched his fists. I make no promises. Izuku lunged forward, his arms hardening so much they turned pitch black. All for one simple raised his hand and blasted a shockwave of air at Izuku. The green-haired killer simply smiled as a portal opened in front of him, sucking in the air blast. Ahaha! H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A Izuku laughed insanely as he reached the villain. He punched at the villain, with said man catching it easily and readied another air blast. Suddenly, a portal opened up behind All for One and let loose the air shockwave for before. All for One sidestepped it and let Izuku take the full brunt of the attack. Izuku took the blast full on, slowly being pushed back while All for One out his hands behind his back and walked forward. You think I'll fall for the same trick twice? All for One asked. For shame, I expected better from. He was cut off by Izuku opening his mouth and letting loose a laser, blasting him back. Just as the masked villain recovered, All Might slid to a stop behind him and punched him away. Hey ha, huh, beam barf I got a name for it. Finally Izuku laughed as he floated in the air, and shot off after All for One. All for One airwalked to stop himself from flying off before shooting forwards to Izuku. Izuku's hand darkened as spikes popped out from his knuckles and covered his entire forearm, as well had his claw hands and block hands enhanced the gauntlet strength. This was enough to easily give All for One a right hook into the ground. Izuku landed down right as All Might was on top of All for One, holding him down by his mask-covered face. It's dot 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 over. All Might grunted out through gritted teeth. HM HM HM. All for One chuckled. No, it's far from over. Tell me, do you ever think of Nana's grandson? All Might was overcomes with rage as he shoved All for One's face deeper into the already cracked and destroyed asphalt. Shut up. HM HM, does my young protege remind you of anyone? All for One kept going. Stop it All Might clenched his fist tighter around the villain's head, threatening to crush it. He's Shimura Nana's grandson. All for One spoke in a sing-song tone. Enough All Might roared in rage as a slammed his other fist deep into All for One's face. Unlucky, All for One had used a quirk, impact recoil, and redirected the smash into All Might's stomach. The number one hero was flung back just before Izuku caught him. It truly is a shame. All for One muttered as he walked out of the crater as he dusted off his suit, which was no already ripped and torn in multiple places. I would be able to do much more if I had search. Ragdoll wasn't able to be taken away by my students' subjects. All Might shrunk down even more as Izuku helped him steady himself. All for One smirked. Although, it is fun to see you like this. Not literally of course, but you understand. All Might. Izuku spoke. Said hero looked down and grimaced. I'm losing more and more of my strength. He aimed at the same spot as he did before. Izuku saw the now torn open wound the All Might was clutching. I knew it, you were injured. Izuku smirked as he held out his arm. Using his mouth, he created a large smoke screen across the field to hide them. Bite down till you taste my. All Might looked so very confused, so Izuku continued. Drink my. One of my quirks is healer. I don't know how much it can heal you, but it should at least do something to help. But I cannot digest it. My stomach is completely gone. Don't worry, it still should heal the remaining pieces of the stomach till it makes a new one. Now go on, bite bite. All Might hesitated, but Izuku grabbed a piece of skin with his spiked gauntlet hand and pierced it, letting flow out. Slowly, All Might drank the red liquid. The stopped as Izuku let the wound heal using super regeneration. The open wound closed on All Might's stomach and his breath steadied out as he regained some of his body muscle. I feel better, thank you. All Might said. Izuku nodded as the smoke screen was blasted away by All for One. He smirked. After this is over, I'll try to see if my can heal everything that's wrong with you. 
For now though, let's finish this. All Might nodded as his smile returned. Let's. All Might walked forwards as Izuku jumped up and landed on his shoulder. Oh. All for one said, intrigued. You're back again All Might. Yup. Izuku answered as he crossed his arms. And you're going down. Am I now? All for one spoke. Yes. All Might said. And do you want to know why? Because we. Izuku started. Are here All Might finished. Izuku hopped off All Might's shoulder and started to morph. His body grew spikes on his elbows, knees, heels. Shoulders, his gauntlets grew sharper, and his teeth were covered in spikes. His entire body turned pitch black and expanded to enhance his muscle mass. Spike body, stone body, claw hands were the first quirks that started this form. Then his new quirks, muscle growth made stone body more effective and quirk enhancer let him enhance the power of the base quirks. Right now, he looked like a muscular man with spike-like armor, his body was pitch black making him look like a purely dark figure with gaseous green hair. I am the embodiment of plus ULTRAAA Izuku screamed in excitement. He didn't think the quirks would mesh well together, but they did. All Might shook his head. Focus young Midoriya. Oh yeah. Izuku said as he was sent out of his excitement days. Portals appeared all around All for One, trapping him in the dome of portals. Izuku lunged forward into another portal in front of him and disappeared. All Might did the same. Suddenly, Izuku shot out of a portal on All for One's side and smashed a fist into his stomach, before jumping up into another portal. All Might then jumped out of another portal and knocked the reeling villain into the ground and disappeared into a portal. The cycle continued over and over until All for One threw his arms out to his side. Enough his arms compressed again before shooting back out, blasting a forceful red shockwave from his body that disrupted the portals, dispelling them. Both Izuku and All Might landed a few yards away on a damaged but still standing building. He seems mad. Izuku commented as he crouched down looking at the villain's shockwave incinerate everything close to him, leaving a completely flat and empty space. All Might nodded as he started to breathe heavily. Shit. It seems I'm losing my strength again. Before Izuku could offer his again, he had to tackle All Might through a portal to avoid a large air shock wave that destroyed the building they were on. They landed down on the ground as All Might turned to Izuku. We need to end this now. The blonde symbol of peace said as he stood up. I have a way to beat him like I did years ago, but I need him to be close to me. Izuku stood up and walked towards the ex leader of villains and threw up a thumbs up to the fading hero behind him. Be ready, I got this. Young Midoriya it's too dangerous for you to be there by yourself. I got this All Might. My mother's still watching out for me. Besides, Izuku turned and looked All Might in the face, with a genuine smile. Dot 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 it's what heroes do. And with that, Izuku dashed off towards the villain leaving All Might to prepare his final attack. Izuku leapt into the air and pointed his hands at the villain. Double buster Izuku shouted. All for one dodged the blast, but portal appeared in front of the beams. The portal then closed, reopening right where the villain landed, blasting him backwards. Izuku quickly rushed forwards and swung at him. The villain did the same as their fists clashed. Izuku ducked backwards as All for One's now enlarged fist smashed into the ground. Izuku quickly hopped forward and planted his foot into the man's gut, then used the other to kick him in the face. Before he could do any more damage, he was grabbed by another enlarged fist and held down. You're a very annoying bug. All for One spoke with slight annoyance. Tamira won't be bothered by you anymore. Izuku was being pushed into the ground, crushed by an enlarged arm with multiple bones and metal pieces popping out. Izuku just grinned. Suddenly, All for One fell forward as he put all his weight was put into the arm which was currently in the portal that Izuku created. Then, the portal shut, taking the arm with it. HGN. All for One grunted in slight pain as he used his other hand to cauterize the wound with one of his flame quirks. His entire face and body had been crushed and ripped beyond repair by All Might. Losing an arm is nothing but an annoyance. Izuku fell down a couple yards away with the giant arm and shoved it off of him as he stood to stare at the villain. Yo. Izuku called out, making the villain look at him. It seems you've been. Disarmed. All for one kept his composure though. It seems I have. I'll be sure to not make that mistake again. Tell me, how many quirks do you have? HM. Izuku stood in a thinker's position, hand on his chin. About 26 if I remember correctly. All for one chuckled. Amazing. Compared to the thousands I have, you are still winning. Flattery will get you nowhere, Bibaka. Izuku said as he acted as he had a giant blush on his face, covering it with his hands. All for one simply held up his hand, ignoring the insanity that was Izuku. Counter this. A large blast of black and yellow flames condensed in a six-feet-sized orb shot out of his hand, and when at Izuku. Izuku simply put his hands to the ground as all the metal in the surrounding area flung in front of him, morphing into a sea of liquid metal. Quirk Enhancer was stupidly useful. Now as long as he could see the metal he could manipulate it, it just took more concentration. As the two attacks clashed, the metal surrounded the orb and condensed before a large explosion blasted the metal apart, but it harmed nobody. It would have been much worse without the metal barrier. Midoriya, get ready All Might called out as his right arm was extremely muscular compared to his now skeletal body. It seemed this was going to be the final clash. All for one either didn't hear or didn't comment about All Might's outburst. Izuku grinned as he summoned portals all around All for one and disappeared into one below him. This won't work again. 
All for one spoke as he unleashed a shockwave, destroying the portals again. What he didn't expect was a portal to open up underneath him with Izuku launching himself out. Izuku wrapped his legs around the villains and grabbed his only arm left and pointed it in the air. Metal slivered up from the ground and hardened around All for One's legs. It seems we're both stuck here. All for One said, not even struggling against the hold. Yeah but he's not. Izuku grinned crazily as he looked in front of them both. A portal opened up in front of the two as All Might held his arm up for the final attack. But he hesitated. Midoriya, it'll hit you too All Might shouted as he neared the two. I can't. D-O-O-O-I-I-I-T Izuku screamed, interrupting him. All Might suddenly heard the shouts of everyone around him, civilians and heroes alike. Do it All Might. You can do it. All Might don't fail against this worthless piece of trash only I can beat you. Thanks Endeavor. All Might thought sarcastically. All Might. All Might. All Might. All Might. All Might. Tashinori Yagi. All Might. The man who currently held the world on his shoulders along with the kid who was just helping in his own way. Finally smiled a true, real smile since his master died before him. United he started as he had back his fist. Izuku smiled at him. States All Might put all his power and focus into this one punch. All for one stared at him with indifference, already knowing from the beginning he was going to lose. Of All Might clenched his buttocks tightly just like Nana told him. He always thought she was messing with him, but no he truly understood why. To put all his force into an attack. S-M-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
a lie, but a needed one. He came along with a few of my students to try and rescue Bakugo Katsuki. While he forced them to assist, they were still glad to help. He and my students got Bakugo out of there so I could fight the villain without holding back. But, he helped out a lot. Still, he will still be pursued as any normal villain would. How so all might? The same reporter asked. Without him I might have lost. With that heavy statement, silence rang out. Those words shocked many in the room. After a few more moments, another reporter spoke up. Will you go into retirement? And, if I may ask, what happened to your body? All Might chuckled. It's quite alright. You see, years ago I faced the same villain, and we both damaged each other deeply, but I still won. This form you see now is because I didn't receive proper treatment for the injury. But thanks to the extremely talented staff in the hospital system, I'm expected to make a full recovery. And to answer your first question, All Might stood up, a smile appearing on his skeletal face. Suddenly, his entire body grew muscular and tall, just like his usual All Might form. Except this time, he looked so much more lively. I shall never retire when there's still people in need All Might shouted as he clenched his arm covered in the cast, making it break off into hundreds of pieces. I shall still be here standing tall and strong so I can reach all of those in need I shall still be here to teach the next generation of heroes what I truly means to be a hero. I shall still be here to tell the world that I am here. With that speech out of the way, the entire room applauded and cheered as did everyone watching. Including Izuku. Yeah Izuku shouted as he punched the air and started jumping around. All Might, All Might, we.